Hello, everyone. I have a special treat for you today. I have recorded for you a case study. It is a full session that I did with a client. So you get to see a transformation happen from start to finish, from the problem to finding the solutions, the resources, and the resolution. All you're going to see today is the session that we did, which is about two and a half to three hours long. Uh, you're not going to get to see the results of the transformation, but I will let you know that I have that on the way. It's already been recorded. So just a little spoiler alert. She did make it through to the other side where she was feeling blocked, stuck in the worst place of her life, just not being able to do the things that she knew that she needed to do in order to take care of herself take care of her family. She had all the symptoms of ADHD, procrastination, the low energy, the tiredness, the immovableness of not being able to motivate oneself to actually do what needs to be done, feeling that you lack discipline, um, the sadness, the apathy, the worry, the anxiety, the time management or executive functioning issues, not knowing her worth and people pleasing. But you'll hear about it um, from Vanessa's mouth as she talks about in the session. And then later I'll show you her three month check-in where she's talking about all the transformation that happened in three months because of that session and then i also have another a second session and um, i have checked in with her uh, a month uh, to five weeks later and everything is going really well you get to see that the impact that it has is lasting I'm going to narrate on top so that you're getting a good idea about what an ach session looks like and if you are a hypnotist or healer, you'll get an idea of how this is different from any other kind of hypnosis or healing work that you've done before that uses techniques and scripts to guide people rather than attuning to the person as they are. And so I'll be pointing things out as we go along um, so that you can see the patterning that's happened and also the techniques or lack of technique that is being utilized. So here we go. Hey, Vanessa, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. So what's the problem? What's the problem today? My feeling is that something that has kept me down and from being successful for um, most of my life, at least within memory, um, has been what I'm calling now as I'm getting awareness of things that are like on the ADHD spectrum is um, executive dysfunction and time management. Um, time management has always been a thing. I mean, it's sort of a joke to everyone. It's not a, a funny joke, but it's a joke. And it's caused serious problems for me that I'm like five to 10 minutes late fairly consistently. And it's something I've been very conscious of and working on a lot, um, but it, it's not resolved by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's still very challenging for me and the part that makes it the most challenging is the executive dysfunction part of it where i will simply almost have this paralysis when i have a timeline when i have something that needs to be done in a certain amount of time um if i have to be out the door at three and it takes me a half hour to get there and i know i have to be gone by 2 30 to get where i'm going my brain will sometimes only just see the three o'clock and i will wait until two o'clock to start getting ready and or 1 30 when i have you know takes me an hour and a half two hours to get ready and obviously i'm putting myself at a deficit because i'm not measuring the time appropriately um i will i mean literally be sitting sometimes and asking myself why aren't you getting up all, all you have to do is get up and go do the thing why aren't you doing this and somehow like like just almost um without control to start scrolling my phone or something else will. All right, so this part of the session uh, right now, this is called the hypnotic interview. 
And essentially, this is getting more information about the problem, asking questions about the problem. Um, a lot of what Vanessa and I are talking about in this video here, uh, we would, if I was working with a client, we would normally cover a lot of these symptoms in the initial um, consultation call or clarity call. And so I, I want to point out that in the hypnotic interview, what I'm doing is I'm simply asking questions that I'm curious about. There's not a set uh, list of questions. I'm not going down a checklist. I'm not like looking at a script. I'm not queuing her up for anything. What I'm doing is asking questions that I am curious about. And also what I'm doing is I'm looking for unconscious moments. So those are, are times where Vanessa is going to tap into her subconscious mind or unconscious mind naturally without my prompting at all. And so I'm not, I, I don't have to do the old time hypnosis of now you're getting relaxed, watch, watch the pendulum go back and forth or look up uh, or go down a flight of stairs. None of those inductions were simply going to talk and I'm looking for these unconscious moments and we already saw one. And so I'm going to just re uh, rewind this just a second so that you can see that there's this pause. There's a slight pause, like she's thinking, Vanessa looks away, and then she answers. And then she's going to say control. So when she says control, that is the subconscious mind coming to the surface and letting us know something. What exactly that is, we don't know, but we're going to file that away. Like just almost um, without control, just start scrolling my phone without or something control else will come around to distract me like okay well i'll do that let me go grab a sandwich real quick and oh this needs to get put away in the other room and in the other room then this gets my attention and i have to go to the bathroom and the bathroom takes longer than i am so it's just like this big snowball that i collect in order to not do the things then it's too late to do the things um i let people down very consistently i let myself down all the time uh, because there are things I could be doing and being incredibly successful, but I'm not, you know, these, it's really just coming up as I'm just not doing the thing. And right now I'm sort of at a critical moment where, um, it's not just me anymore. Before it was easy to let me down. I would just deal with it. I'm used to letting myself down. What's the big deal. Now I have a partner and letting them down is letting us down and our lives and putting unnecessary pressure on them. And that's not the relationship I want to have, you know, and I'm realizing what I'm doing to them, I've been doing to myself most of my life, you know, um, letting yourself down. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. I'm supposed to undergo testing for the ADHD portion, but, um, it's come up that a horseback riding accident when I was 12 and the subsequent brain damage that was never even talked about in 89 <laughs> um, or whenever that was, was it? So now she's talking about some possible, possible physiological reasons for these, you know, symptoms that she's having. And those could be the case. We, you know, always want to rule those out ahead of time. However, as we can see that the fact that she has had this transformation, um, then that's that's not the major thing that, that we're going. So right now, most everything we're doing, this is all conscious. And you'll know it's conscious because it rolls off the tongue. It's going fast, fast, fast. There might be little pauses to reflect and, and pull from, from memory. Uh, and so those are unconscious moments as well. However, we're looking for the things that are significant. 80, in the late 80s, no one ever said traumatic brain injury then. No one brought this up. No one, I guess, if there was no scan at that time that showed trauma, 
her obvious trauma, it just never got brought up. But now it's being pieced together that a lot of the symptoms I'm having with being overly sensitive, tactile sensitive, and um, um, having photophobia, all of this is around this injury and possibly up to and including these ADHD type symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it may not be this dysfunction, it could be an actual, you know, cerebral issue. And um, didn't see that coming. <laughs> that was new. That was an interesting thing to, to why, why, why are you here today? I am here to hopefully unlock whatever it is that is keeping me stuck in these patterns of being you saw that unconscious just, moment unlock you know, stop you know as far especially in that way of um the mind uses meta metaphors and so even things like unlock stuck can be metaphors i have a lot of people go to like a jail type situation they feel like they're trapped in a cage or a, or a jail or in a tight space like and so so the, these are metaphors that she's using here not almost being physically tied and blocked from physically tied blocked i mean literally even up into and including and you could see that unconscious moment where she slowed down and blinked a long blink so the subconscious mind is coming up with all of these metaphors and we just want to keep bringing her attention back to these unconscious moments that are coming up so it's sending the message to the unconscious mind like hey i'm here i'm listening to you give me more of this in a shower like i don't i, I can keep myself from doing that and it's insane it's absolutely insane to me that um you feel physically tied yes and, I mean, and, I feel... that, and, that, and earlier you said you don't have control what's it like what is reinforcing like? those unconscious like moments tied it's so you see trans starting again and so i asked her that what is it like to be tied when when i'm asking what is it like that's um forcing a metaphor it's saying hey unconscious mind let's put more attention on that so it just keeps bringing her back to these unconscious moments so that she can go deeper into that so what is it like to feel tied and so she might talk about you know what it feels like in her body it might come up with another metaphor uh, it could go any number of places but notice that i'm not guiding her i'm not telling her what to do i'm not saying okay i want you to find a lock and and or and and get a key and go through those keys and find the right one that fits there and now you're opening it up and you're free i'm not telling her to do that right now we're just in the hypnotic interview anyway um, and so what we're really looking for here are those unconscious moments and asking curious questions. It, it's, I, I feel a lot of shame. I feel a ton of shame because there we go. it's ridiculous. What ridiculous. do you mean you can't ridiculous. just get up and start moving? What do you mean you can't just go do the thing? You're just not wanting to do the thing. You're trying to delay it. Why would I want to delay taking a shower? Why would I want to delay getting myself ready so I can walk out the door and go to this important thing. Um, you know, it makes no sense. So I'm very shameful of being doing this and I'm shameful. Like I don't, I don't do something I told someone I'm definitely going to do, but I procrastinated my way out of it. You know, it's, um, it feels ridiculous and it's upsetting. So being stuck and having that powerlessness, I don't, I'm take, taking it less as being powerless and more as being just dumb. And, and so you've heard ridiculous come up at least two times now, and now we're hearing dumb. And so ridiculous, silly, those can often be less about like playful, like goofy and more about dumb. And so now we're seeing this come up that there's some sort of belief playing out around not being enough when it comes to intelligence it's non-responsive and, and irresponsible and it's irresponsible dumb. yeah and i don't like feeling dumb <laughs> it's really upsetting did you see did you see that unconscious moment i don't like feeling dumb 
hard eye blink. Lots of space, lots of space, lots. Yeah. Um, I was in, in my head, I'm just like, so what do we do now? This is <laughs> um, waiting to see what, maybe if I'm missing a cue and I'm supposed to be doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Being dumb is not fun. That's a very big trigger for me. Um, huge trigger for me. And it, and now she says it like we've been seeing it and now it makes sense that it's a huge trigger for her. And e even as a good friend of hers, I did, I didn't know this. She does not come across that way at all. She's very intelligent, very good with her words. And so, um, but the subconscious mind was letting us know we were seeing it come up and now she's saying huge trigger for me. And it even came about earlier when she's like, oh, I'm looking to see if I'm doing this right. Am I missing something? Am I doing it wrong? This, this voice in the head that wants to do it right, that wants to people please, that wants the validation and it, it is motivated by that. And so then when there's not the motivation there, it's just being, it's like, how am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do this right and be good enough? So to feel just like I'm being stupid, I'm sabotaging myself. Why didn't I do this? Why did I let all this other just ridiculousness come into play for me? Ridiculous and again. Get in the way. And I didn't have to. I could have done something. But and now it's too late. It seems ridiculous very ridiculous so notice that i'm not doing anything to solve the problem here i'm 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 not doing anything other than reflecting back in as few words as possible what it is that i'm hearing her say those trigger words to bring her back into the unconscious moment out of the mind that wants to tell another story, go here, go there, but into that unconscious moment so we can be with that and intensify the pain that's there so that we can do something with it. Being tired, um, being tired and sleepy and suddenly like just it, falling to sleep. And you can imagine from what we know now, only um, seven minutes into the session, seeing how her mind is working, feeling out of control, feeling, oh, I got, I, got, I got to be right all the time so that I can avoid this huge trigger, we can already see how that can be extremely tiring. So it makes sense that now she's saying that's tiring, extremely, extremely exhausting. It is another, um, I don't know if it's a tool, to keep from doing things again I so I don't know how much of it is a physical entity and how much of it is a mental entity because we've talked before about um if I were successful what would what would that feel like well there's a lot of pressure in being successful you have to continue to be successful you have to continue to do all this stuff that has nothing to do with me taking a shower though you know if I'm successful and so at this point you might be wondering what does success have to do with feeling dumb or inadequate or ridiculous and not in control. Why would anyone that feels less than and not capable actually put themselves out there enough to be successful? If I'm successful, then what might happen? And we haven't gone there yet. We don't, I don't think we go there in this session. It just this is another direction that we could go there's multiple directions that we could go there's not a script again this is not a written out planned out technique all roads lead to rome but this is definitely a path that we could have gone gone down talking about success and the reason why the mind might want to keep her from success because that's not safe because then she'll be outed as not being smart enough a shower then i am clean my hair isn't greasy i don't have to wear a hat you know there's a lot of benefits to taking a shower so how does that work in um it doesn't make some of the stuff it makes sense in that degree and in other things it doesn't 
So I don't completely understand why it's happening. So I'm hoping to find a way through this to where at least, even if it's not fully operational, that maybe some of it is, or some of the things are making more sense. Um, and I can live a, little, a lot more functionally and live a lot more successfully um, with whatever we walk away with today. So what's the problem? So this is a foundational ACH question. What's the problem? We start off with what's the problem and we keep coming back to what's the problem and checking in on the problem. Because what the problem initially might be in the clarity call or even when we start the session um, can morph and transform as we go along. And ideally, but not always, we're getting to a point where we ask the client, what's the problem? And they're like, what problem? Like, I don't have a problem. I can't, like, I don't even remember anymore because they've, they've had such breakthroughs um, throughout that session. The problem is that I am not working at my, I'm not working right now at all. Um, I'm not stepping into my potential. I'm not, I have resources, I have talents, I have abilities to do a lot of different things. Um, and I'm not doing them. I am letting fear and whatever this other part is, or it's just the manifestation of the fear to keep me from doing these things. Um, Again, it's, it's that fear. And it makes sense. Well, the depraved part of me would say me, I'm stopping me. I'm keeping it from happening because it's big, it's bad, it's scary, it's something I don't I don't know, and it's gonna cause me to have all this responsibility. So, mm -hmm. so there's something about responsibility. It would create, to move forward and be successful in her business and all the responsibility that comes with being successful, um, that's scary. And so now she's even saying, she, she tells us exactly what it is right here. If I'm successful, then that's scary because I can be outed. And then there's also all this responsibility. It seems so big. So of course her subconscious mind is like, why do you want to do that? You don't want to do that. Let's just sit here and do nothing instead. Let's be on social media. Let's watch all kinds of YouTube channels. Let's listen to mo like more podcasts. Let's just take in more information, find more distractions and not actually do the stuff that's going to move you to where it is that you say you want because you don't really want that. Could be. Scary. Look at that. And I don't know why I've been responsible my whole life. Um, See this trance? This is trance. This is I what could, trance you know, looks like ruminate on my, well, just, you know, for Vanessa, everyone does trans different relationship, which I know has nothing to do with it. It's just becoming more aware to me because of my relationship. I have a different mirror to look into and different consequences now than I did before, but this has been ongoing for quite some time. Um, I have, I was going to say I have less responsibility now, but I do have a very supportive partner, which I've never in my life had. You know, um, I couldn't even count on my parents as well as I can count on this person. And isn't that interesting? In some ways, I feel like having that safety net is really keeping me from wanting to move forward because it's safer now to not mm. do anything. You know, I have the support and I won't fall, crash, burn or die. But I also had a dream the other day that they were setting up things in order for me to be more easily leave them and leave the relationship, which is absolutely not what they want. But I can see, I would start considering that after a while, if I continue to do what I'm doing. So yeah, there's a fear, there's a motivation to not be like this anymore, for sure. Um, but the more safe you feel, 
the less motivation there is to change. That's, I've been considering that lately, that that's been part of the reason it's been so challenging. And they've even brought it up too. We've talked about it and something, another friend brought it up. Um, so it's definitely, you know, a reason that it could be as rampant as it is right now. Again, these are conscious conclusions. about safety and responsibility. What do those have to do with each other? Um, I have thought of this too. So uh, do you see what I did with that question? I didn't, I didn't connect the dots for her. Like I've been connecting dots in this session. I need her mind to connect the dots. And so I brought it two of those unconscious moments. You could even look at those as resources. I brought up two of those. I said, what do those have to do with each other? And so again, that's bringing her back into the unconscious mind and then saying, hey, these are related. These came up for a reason. Why is that? <laughs> I've had all of these major revelation, re revelations, excuse me, um, but they've not, I need to write this shit down, honestly. Um, I grew up in constant chaos. It was very much um, putting out fires. It was very much, you know, high intensity reaction because there was always something ridiculous going on. There was always ridiculous something happening. And so I became very accustomed to living in chaos. And I even told that we had a, um, I had a car accident recently and they get very upset and very, you know, stressed out whenever things are happening. And I'm like, don't worry. Um, when the bottom falls out, that's when I, that's when I perform. That's when I'm great. And usually it is when shit hits the fan, that's when I go into action mode and I am at my best. It didn't happen this time. And, um, because she's safe. It, she's it really safe. didn't. I mean, <laughs> I was kicking and screaming so far, you know, into the process of trying to get, um, things in a better place. It was, um, it was really weird, but as much as my life, my adult life has been not quite as chaotic as my upbringing was, it certainly still has, you know, I have a job, I lost a job, a uh, car broke down, or this thing with money, I can't pay my rent, I'm paying my rent now, you know, all these things, these, they still come up. Usually monthly, there is something that happens. It's rarely a smooth sailing situation. Excuse me. What does chaos have to do with the problem? Well, there's, um, I'm bringing chaos into the situation because I feel like that's in my life before it's been normal. Um, chaos is normal. Chaos has been normal. Um, chaos has just been what my life is like. And in the meantime, Nat's trying to find a doctor to help get them anxiety medication because that's what I'm bringing into the relationship. They are needing to be medicated to deal with all the shit that's been going on. And um, it's what does sad. That, what does that mean? To deal with all the shit that's been going on? The, um, does that mean to deal with you? In essence, yeah. You know, um, Nat would not have like they're stressed out because I work, I do gig work and I'm doing gig work so as to avoid dealing with. An There's that word deal with again. So deal with came across real clear. And so that's why I asked her, what does it mean to deal with? And so we're going to see that show up throughout this session. Actual job. Um, I don't want to deal with working around other people. My last experience was absolutely terrible. Um, reminded me why I got out of working an office job to begin with. And actually it was just a lot worse. <laughs> it was so terrible. Um, and there, because we have a future that we need to build and whatever I lack or I'm not doing is directly affecting them. And you know, that's not great. That's not great for them to have to stress out because I'm not towing the line. I'm not picking up where I need to. 
um, the car accident, I mean, I was behind the wheel whenever it was their car, you know, that got wrecked. Um, we were purchasing a car based on my needs and I drug my feet in figuring out what kind of car we wanted to look for to going and actually seeing cars. I mean, I was like, so every step they're like, Hey, did you apply for jobs today? Hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do that? I'm starting to resent it because I feel like it's just like, you know, them pointing out what I didn't do. They don't know that I didn't do it. I told them I was going to. So I made an agreement. They're following up on the agreement, checking in on how things went. And if I say, you know, no, I didn't, it's just, you know, I recently asked them, you know, are you ashamed of me? Like, I'm personally disappointed in myself. And they said the only disappointment is you're not doing anything. Hence the whole thing, you know, that being frozen and locked in not doing something. Um, yeah, I think it, you know, at this point. That locked, frozen, you got to see. See it, that trance? Uh, see it? She's trancing now. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if it's the fear. I don't know if it's, I, there's just, there, again, there have been a lot of things that have come up and have brought clarity to why, but I've not gotten any clarity as to how to improve it. You know, um, what are you, what are you feeling right now? What's happening there? Um, I feel that right now. Not really feeling anything right now, honestly. Just kind of, um, just detached. Um, I don't really feel anything right now. Pure unconscious moment there. I used to go numb pretty easily. Uh, lately, it's been harder. Well, not hard enough. I try to. I've worked a long time to get keep from doing that. But um, yeah, I don't really. I'm kind of. I, I'm fairly fairly detached emotionally right now. You feel numb. Numb-ish, but it's. I don't know that I would put it that way. Detached feels more appropriate because um, we're talking about this on a matter of fact, cerebral level. You know, I'm not sitting in the other room, ruminating and thinking about all the ways I failed myself and others. You know, <laughs> and how I should have done this, and looking across the room and at this pile of laundry, and like, yeah, I should have done. So we're we're seeing these root causes come about. Why do I have executive functioning? Why am I feeling depressed? Why am I feeling anxious? Why am I not able to move forward? Why am I progressing? It makes perfect sense because she has the thought in her brain, look at all of the ways that I failed others. And we're seeing that show up over and over and over again in this call. I'm not working. I may, I should do, you know, something around here. And, you know, the, um, Matt and I have different, um, organizational styles, <laughs> let's put it that way. And the clutter is just like a lot. But that shuts me down. It's like, I don't even want to do, I'm just exhausted. You know, I don't even feel the sense of exhaustion right now. I'm just very static. I don't have any, um, yeah, I'm detached. That's the only way I can really effectively put this. Detached, shut down, mm. frozen. Increasing the pain. See that? That's a trance. To feel frozen. Um, it doesn't feel great. I mean, there's no joy in that. There's no. Um, you can you can see right there when I say, "What is it like to feel frozen?" She is feeling into herself, which is the opposite of detachment, actually. She's feeling into her body, into her energy, into her emotions. And what she comes up with is it's not joyful. So then what is it? And so it's the subconscious mind just kind of like sorting through everything. What, what's going on here? If 
there's somewhere we want to go, we pull out a map. So if I want to go to Cleveland, I'm going to put a pin in there. That's my point B. But, in, but then in order to get there, I need to know where I'm at. And so this is her orienting herself right now. And a lot of times client want to go back into the mind, back into the chatter, and it's bringing them back to what's going on right now. That's why I'm repeating back those unconscious moments, those trigger words keep bringing her back so we can stop avoiding, stop repressing, stop pushing away and actually deal with another one of her trigger words, actually deal with this stuff. And you, in, in this session, you're not going to see like many other sessions where everything's tied up in a bow, pretty perfect bow at the end and everything looks like it's all healed and transformed um because she's dealing with thing after thing you'll see that we just keep going through layer after layer of actually dealing with stuff rather than avoiding there's no sense of possibility i don't have like um there's no purpose in it that's been another part is having a purpose and i don't know what my purpose is um, having made this big move as far as this particular situation is concerned, even though I feel as if it's exacerbated, it's not. I've just like been able to sit still and not be as distracted as I was in St. Louis to be able to sit with it and realize it's happening, um, having to face it because it's easy to not face when all your friends are around and there's this party and there's this event and this person wants to meet you for lunch and this person wants to meet you for coffee. You know, if you're going down all of the ways that she distracts and avoids rather than dealing with, with it. And she even used another term for dealing with it there. She's saying, looking, looking at it versus, oh, well, back when I lived in St. Louis, I had all these friends and all these things to do and I didn't have to look at it. And now that I'm living somewhere new, I also don't want to look at it, but now she's set up a situation where it's keeping her stuck until she looks at it. And so that's what we're doing right now. Busy for 18 hours out of the day, you don't have time to sit and think about all the shit you're, you know, that you're missing out on. And um, yeah, it's made it really, I have had to really look hard at a lot of stuff because I don't have a choice. Excuse me. You're missing out on things. Yeah. Oh, sure. I haven't, I mean, we've done basically, a, I'm living in this place that I've wanted to live for 13 years, you know, and it's beautiful. It has so many things going for it. And instead of exploring, really putting myself out in a lot of ways, I've just, um, allowed myself to sink into a routine and it hasn't been uh i definitely did not come out here with my purpose and back to purpose well i think i know what those things are i haven't taken the steps necessary to really dig into them and move forward with them so isn't that an odd thing um later on she'll she'll say she doesn't know what her purpose is but she does she does have an idea she's known for a while and she's avoiding that and it goes back to that success that fear of success that we talk about the fear of responsibility having been responsible her whole life and now that it's safe and it's calm and she doesn't have chaos to motivate her she doesn't know what to do and so she does know, but then she's telling herself she doesn't. And so it's just creating another layer of inner chaos because that's what's familiar for her. That's what's comfortable. When there's not the external chaos, let's create internal chaos and confusion. That what the real issue is here, purpose? I don't know. Um... Look at that trance. 
that yawn oh, excuse me unconscious um, moment that yawn is an unconscious moment i mean that's you'll see that's her continue a, to that's yawn. a symptom in my big purpose all the stuff for sure i'm just I'm mentally right now trying to create lines between purpose and the frozenness the incapacity to do things Okay, so now she's connecting those dots. What do these two have lines. to do with each other? Hmm? Drawing those lines. I mean, everything I'm doing is keeping me away from discovering or acting out that purpose. Really? I'm not calling the people I need to talk to. I'm not... Um, making the connections i'm not setting up the websites i'm not creating the classes i'm not yeah the only i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not i have a list a pretty expansive list um i've asked people to hold me accountable and that didn't work um so yeah the even if i had absolute clarity in what my purpose is and what i need to be doing it's not getting done you know, so it's <laughs> irregardless of what the, the purpose is, um, the vehicle to getting it done is me and my vehicle is stalled. It's like stalled. There's a block. There's a blockage. Things are only flowing so far and they're getting stuck there and they're just waiting for the gates to open to let every all that energy through. Great metaphor. So I have a blockage. So you want those gates to open mm -hmm. and they feel like they're locked now yeah reinforcing because it's so easy for me to be overwhelmed right now and there's so much of that sitting there and it takes literally nothing for me to become overwhelmed um a couple things happen and it's because i'm i'm i mean i said not we had a conversation the other day and i sent them this giant text like pages and pages long of all the different things that have been happening and it's just stacking on this plate of overwhelm for me. So it's between emotional things, mental things, physical things, um, health related things, and you know, all these things and all the ways I felt dysfunctional or I felt less than or um, not capable or, you know, all the different depraved adjectives you can think of. Um, so it's, it, the backup, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's less like a pile against the door and it's more like a plate that teeters constantly and has me exhausted and has me shutting down because I can't deal with it all. Um, it's just too much at one time. As you're balancing that plate, mm -hmm. teetering. Yeah. So notice that I'm still not attempting to fix her problem. I'm not coming in with tips or solutions or coaching or saying, well, have you tried this? I'm an ADHD specialist. I'm an ADHD coach. Have you tried this? I help people move past procrastination. You need to write a list. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. Like I, I'm not attempting to fix or change anything. All I'm doing is feeding back to her those triggers that are coming up those unconscious moments to keep taking her deeper so that her subconscious mind can make those connections and start unraveling things herself yeah teetering like very teetering there we go another That's nice it. yawn so right there, that's it. That's right. So so that's that is a, a way of deepening, um, of signaling to the subconscious mind. That's right. That's it. That's what we want more of. Keep going. I feel like they're teetering. Mm -hmm. So that is what I want to work on. 
to um, clear off the plate, figure out how to manage it, um, figure out what that door is and how to open it and keep it opened because opening it and getting things done and having a great month means isn't isn't helpful if it doesn't stay open back to that you door know, being closed or energy locked has to open. at least be running i mean i would say right now i'm probably at 20 or 30 percent have you ever wondered why the plate is teetering um I feel like I am able to, sometimes I feel like I manipulate in a way to, you know, have this, the, the meltdown, the near meltdown and freak out and let someone know I'm, I'm teetering, you know, that I'm about to crack. This is getting to be too much and, um, not on purpose. I'm not intending or wanting to manipulate, but more like a cry for help. Like, look, all this is happening right now. And I just am I'm about, about to lose it. I never get to that losing it point. So I feel like it would just, the whole thing would crash. The things that are teetering right now have not burst into flames. Now there's a couple flames. that can, and I need to get to really fast because they're big things and they can, you know, bad things will happen if they're not attended to soon. Um, so yeah this um i feel like that's kind of what you can see that she starts to go there many times she she starts to go into this deeper trance and then she backs away and if i and if i were to use some of these processing instructions what i call deepening language that's our form of deepening language process instructions that's right that's it sometimes she kind of looks at me like, what are you talking about? And so she starts to go a little deeper and then she backs away. Part of it is this, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? It's teetering either I, you know, lose it and people back off or expect a little less of me for a while so I can collect myself or the stuff that, you know, it's still teetering because it's not dead yet. You know, it's not in flames yet. So teetering is almost better than, <laughs> than the alternative. So now it's between so, teetering or flames. If things were to stop teetering, they'd burst into flames. Some things would. Yeah. So you can see here, if those are her two options, either a teeter or a burst into flames, then of course, it makes sense that the unconscious mind would be like, okay, well, let's just keep teetering. She said just a, about a minute ago that she's creating this inner chaos because somehow she needs it because it's keeping her from bursting into flames. Do those things need to burst into flames? Um, one of them that is in the front and foremost of my brain is a definitely not, um, that would be really, really bad for myself and others. So, yeah. What's the alternative? Um, what's the alternative? What do you mean? The, uh, so what would happen? Flames, you've got teetering, mm -hmm. it goes too far, you got flames on the other mm -hmm. side is what? Um, on the other side is where the lack of that dysfunction would come in. It would, it would flow. There would be a lot more flow. So here's the and possibility. Because some of these things, though, especially the one thing that could burst into flames, it, it's, I've kept it in somewhat of a um, ignorance is bliss sort of situation, whereas I don't even know how bad it is. You know, it's, um, you're, you're, it's bad. You're done with it. Um, yeah, I'm just keeping myself in ignorance. I just, you know. There we go. Ignorance again. Ignorance. Um, what are you getting out of that? It, it's not as, I don't have to face it. You know, if I took the steps. Face it, deal with it. thought about this. If I took the steps necessary to 
see what things end up being, what the total ends up being, what the end result is and how much I'm dealing with, then it's real. It's really, really real. Mm. It's real already. And real is the opposite of dissociation or detachment. And that's what she's avoiding. No doubt about that, but it would be <clears throat> extra real. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I would have, it's kind of like one of those, you can't unsee it kind of situations. I would be, if once you know, then you have a responsibility and um, I would have to deal with it. Responsibility, responsibility again. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like dealing with it. Yeah. What's, mm -hmm. what's scary about seeing the truth? So you can see, I picked up on her saying, see it. I'd have to see it or I'd have to be seen however she said it. I picked up on that. And so now I'm asking her a question that's using that word because I'm noticing there's something about being seen that's coming up now. I would see how bad I've let myself get. I would see just how far I've let this go and how much of a disadvantage I've put myself and um, how. And she responded twice. I would see this, I would see that. So that tells me that my original thought was correct. There is something about seeing what she doesn't want to see or things about herself that she doesn't want to be seen. So let's hide, let's say stock, let's close the door, let's box everything up. And that shows up as the, these ADHD kinds of symptoms responsible it is that i've let that happen um i have like reached out to what's people scary, for help. what's scary about the, the things you don't want to look at though the things you don't want to deal with bring it what's back scary about that? it's financial related finances have never been my friend mm -hmm. um i watched my parents the home we lived in was like i saw them fight to keep it out of foreclosure for years now we're into you finances know, um, so uh, already you're seeing we're 30 minutes into the session and already you're seeing that we're covering multiple different things and what does this have to do with the original problem you'll hear me again say later what's the problem but we've already covered what four or five different problems now that are all related to the presenting problem that she's conscious of what does what does all of this have to do with that we're going to find out their money was horribly managed. So it was a very much a feast or famine. And I've seen myself go through those same patterns. Oh, I have money. I can spend the money. Oh, I don't have money anymore. So I need to figure out how to make the money. Oh, I have money. I'm going to go buy that perfume I want. You know, it's just like, it's definitely, or again, whenever I was single and on my own, if there was something I really wanted to do, but there was a bill coming up, I would sacrifice that, let it go late to do the thing I wanted to do and then pay the bill whenever the money came around again. Not healthy. Not now. <laughs> what about now? Um, now I feel like I'm under a lot more pressure to, um, to take care of things in a certain amount because finances are in a religion to, to Nat. You know, they have the whole thing figured out and they're trying to help me get my credit score up. And so we're doing different things. Um, and especially like where our rent is concerned, you know, I make sure I am so hypersensitive because I'm paying them the rent money. You know, there's no hiding. Hiding. I'm slacking off at this point. I absolutely have to get them the money. Um, Are you behind? It's not it. It's not. Are you behind? No. I mean, right now, I'm not making money. I don't know what's going to happen for rent this month. <laughs> it's uh, really scary. But um, so what's the problem? I can't, I don't have, I literally don't have a job right now. Um, we discovered last night that, you know, I was doing the um, Uber and Lyft, the ride share services, um, and the new car, we can't get it registered with Uber due to some situations with uh, how buying a car works here, which is really, really backward from what I 
um, used to. It takes a lot longer. There's then there's we're out of control where that's concerned. I can do um, like the food and package services. So it, you make almost nothing doing that, but it's I'm literally making nothing. So almost nothing is better than absolutely nothing right now. So yeah. I was spreading that tomorrow. It snowed yesterday and it's not safe to go out. Um, right conscious now. stuff, a bunch of conscious stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm, that's, that's why there's the, the lack of resource at the moment. Had I gotten the job before now, you know, <laughs> there's always that part. So before, I know, yeah. so before this happened and you weren't able to work, was this an issue? Oh yeah. This has been an issue for a substantial amount of time. I mean, I, when I was at the terrible job that I got when I first moved here, I should have been looking for a job then, and I didn't. I didn't start looking. I mean, I've been casually looking, been sort of relying on. Um, I'll interject here. That terrible job she referenced, she ended up um, being let go. It was it was not a good um, fit for for either one of them. But she had shame the whole time she was there that she had gotten herself in that situation that she wasn't able to make it work even though she was trying and then all the shame after she let go and so that also uh contributed to what you're seeing here and all of these other beliefs that are popping up it strengthened those beliefs brought them to to the surface for her to look at and so that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing, but now she gets to see what's on the inside. So I like to say, if you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Orange juice, not lemon juice, not apple juice, orange juice. And so when you squeeze a Vanessa, what comes out? Vanessa juice. So that enabled her to be able to see what's inside, thus all of the ruminating going on in her head and since she didn't have a job stewing in that and at the same time trying to avoid it and get away from it and there's this whole tug of war back and forth of i'm stewing but i don't want to i'm going to avoid it let me distract myself with social media and youtube videos and now i can't do anything and now i'm stuck first to bring things to me the effort has not been on my part until very very recently and i want to point out that I'm not telling her any of this. All of the things I'm describing to you all, how I'm connecting the dots, connecting how the mind is working, I'm not telling her that. I'm not connecting those dots for her. I'm telling you because this is, this is how the mind works. And I've also seen further along in this session. And so it's, I'm telling you to help you make sense so that you know what's going on so it doesn't look like we're just having a conversation that there's more going on here underneath the surface and that's why this is advanced conversational hypnosis look at all all that we've uncovered so far and I haven't done a single induction. I haven't done any deepeners I haven't regressed to any scenes yet she's brought some things up and she will continue to. Uh, regress to scenes, even though I did not guide her there. I'm not using any scripts. I'm not using any suggestions. I'm not getting her into a relaxed state and telling her a bunch of positive things about you're a success and you see yourself in it as a success and you see yourself as worthy and deserving with the each and every day that sense of success and worth grows even more. I'm not doing any of that she's going to do that work. I'm helping her to find what she needs to so that her subconscious mind can make the connections. And this is why this work is so powerful. That's why it works so quickly because I'm not telling her how to think. I'm not sorting it out for her. She's doing it. Um, and it's still not as vigorous or energetic as it should be. You know, I'm not putting forth a ton of effort. So it's a there we go that stop that full stop and knowing how bad things have gotten again would be um it, it would just show um how bad things have gotten you know what i've done 
how far I put myself behind. So it's something around effort. Mm -hmm. Effort in dealing with things. Effort in dealing with things. Mm -hmm. feels like effort. Mm -hmm. See how slow this is? I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like all this space. No. All mm -hmm. this quiet. No. Um, I don't. Yeah, some of these things, when I think about them, I get exhausted just thinking about them. It's like, when I do this, if I have to deal with that, like, oh my, I mean, honestly, and I will, it's almost Pavlovian. Like I'm, I think of the thing, the thing is there and I'll like literally just want to fall asleep. So you just want to sleep and not effort and not deal with things. Yep. So we're seeing those conclusions we made just, I mean, earlier. I think frequently, like, what if I didn't have to? What if I could just lay around? You know, I don't have to deal with anything. I can just sit here, <laughs> make YouTube and TikToking and this couch my entire existence. Yeah. You know, that would suck. I would absolutely hate it. But at the same time, that's the path of least resistance. You know, there's nothing keeping that seems to be what's happening. So we can just keep doing that. And I absolutely can't because I can't. I mean, I don't want to destroy this other human that I'm with. And by not participating and not being an active part in our business structure, that's all I'm doing is dragging them down. You know, they're going to drown if I don't start pulling my shit together. How do you know? Someone? How do you know? Challenging her reality. At the very least, I mean, could not make it here and be functional. Yes, it would be complicated. It would be difficult. It's expensive. I mean, our rent is really expensive. Um, and for them, unless they got a roommate, to replace me. <laughs> um, it sounds like a lot of responsibility. It is. And this is the responsibility. I mean, all the other responsibility I can overlook because again, I'm the victim of that. And I'm creating that victimhood. I love Nat and I do not want to make them into a victim due to my circumstances. So that responsibility is, again, this is the mirror that I'm seeing now that I have to look into now that I could avoid before. I can't avoid this anymore, you know? And there we go. Did you hear that? She came to that conclusion on her own. I can't avoid this anymore. So we kept talking about it, asking questions, and essentially, in this case at least, increasing the pain until the point where she's like, okay, I'm looking at it, I'm seeing it, I'm dealing with it, and you know what? I can't avoid it anymore. Yeah. What can you avoid? Oh, I can't avoid what is actually happening. I can't avoid the repercussions of it. You know, I can't avoid... Um, I can't avoid what I've been doing. I can't avoid how bad it's gotten. I can't avoid just how powerful my ability to not do things is and how much I can rationalize it and how much I can, you know, excuse it. Um, so this is the truth that we were talking about. The truth she wasn't seeing. And now she's going down that list She's telling herself the truth about all of those things. So this is a big deal here. She can't avoid it. 
No, it's right here. And it's and it's just no longer So if you can't yeah. avoid if you can't avoid anymore, then what? It again, once you see it, you have to you're right now responsible for it. I am responsible see this for what I know is happening. See it all coming together. Here? Um I've been looking for therapists to you know I've, see it all coming together now. The seeing, the responsible. Once I see it, now I'm responsible for it. I can't avoid it. This is very different than the affirmations or suggestions she was giving herself before. This is empowerment. She is telling herself the truth now. And this is empowerment. You can probably hear the difference in the way that she sounds, even though this isn't positive, even though this isn't the affirmative of the negative, this is her saying, you know what? I'm not avoiding it anymore. This is what's happening. I see it now. I need to take responsibility for it. And it's going to just keep going. We're going to have some more layers unfold um, as we test and continue forward. And you'll see how that unfolds. It's really hard to find a therapist out here. Maybe it's hard to find a therapist everywhere right now. Um, if you can't avoid it, then what? I have to deal with it. Have to deal with it. So if you notice, I kept asking her the same question or a version of the same question to get her to this point where she's not just saying lip service that she's really believing what she's saying i have to deal with it i didn't tell her she had to deal with it she's the one that's saying this and with each time it's getting clearer and clearer and more concrete for her i have to do something about the situation there's no other way to take care of it there's no other way to make it not a situation to protect them and to give us a fighting chance of having a decent life you know and the things that need to be dealt with are none of the things that have already been said and you'll see later on that there are other things that she hasn't been saying she hasn't been acknowledging that she's been hiding from herself and other people and that's what needs to be dealt with not all of this other I got to I got to deal with the ADHD. I got to deal with the executive function. Those are just symptoms. That's just symptoms. That is not at the core of what's going on here. It is something else altogether. And then what happens are those ADHD kinds of symptoms, the procrastination, the lack of follow through, the self sabotage is because we don't want to deal with the other things that are happening. And we'll see uh what those things are later to a certain to a certain extent i asked her if she wanted to edit anything out and she said no she just wants it to be as it is and she wants to be able to help other people with her story and so it's very brave of her if you notice yourself having any kinds of judgments wanting to say anything negative um, I, I want to let you know that if you make comments like that, they will be deleted. Um, I, I want to encourage you to find compassion in your heart because most of us have been in a place like she has. Um, it might not be the exact same thing that you've experienced, but you've had your own low times that you've had a hard time getting out of. You've had patterns of behavior maybe um, even addictions, things that were not good for you that you just couldn't seem to stop. And maybe you currently struggle with something along those lines, but you might not have the same story as Vanessa. So thank you, Vanessa. Um, send her a lot of love for uh, being willing to share like this.